Welcome to Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. And I want to welcome all those happy singles, not so happy singles, and anyone else that's listening. Today, I believe, is episode six, and it features a really important question What's wrong with me? Now, before you turn it off, I'll give you the short answer to that question. It's nothing. But for some reason, as singles, we get this idea in our head that something must be wrong with us if we're not married. And when we have that crazy leprechaun thought in our head that something must be wrong with us or we'd be married, It really steals a lot of the joy from today. I mean, what does it matter? Why do we make it so important to get married? And what if it weren't that important? Now, I'm not saying that it's not, but we treat it like it's life and death. Oh my goodness, if if I'm not married, my life must be on life support. There must be something wrong with me. I don't know about you, that's kind of a crummy way to live life. (laughs) Trust me, I know, because I've lived it for so many years. And then one day I realized that the only thing that was keeping me from being happy was the thought that I had to be married in order to be happy. So coming back to our question, what is wrong with you because you're not married? There's nothing wrong with you. Not a single thing. You just have a different track in life. I mean, it could be right around the corner for you. There's nothing wrong with you. Except, very similar to me, you might think you have to be married in order to be happy. Because somebody once some, somewhere told you that that was the case. That is not the case. And if someone did tell you that, what kind of cruddy advice is that? You've had plenty of cruddy advice. Why, why do you take on that? If nobody's ever told you this seriously, you don't have to be married to be happy. But we start overthinking. We start thinking, there absolutely must be something wrong with me. As my mentor Michael Neal talks about, we start using these given statements. It's like, well, given the fact that I'm not married, I must not be able to be happy. What if this was just the plan for you? I I know and I understand the pain sometimes of being single. But it's nothing you did wrong. It's just we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And when when that doesn't look okay to us, we start creating reasons. We start make-believing. But we start make-believing things that we don't want to believe. Because of of this, I'm not able to get married. And because I'm not able to get married, I'm, I'm unhappy. I have to be unhappy. It's a rule. It's a law. Well, unlike the speed limits, you get to make up your own rules. You get to make up what you make believe. So why not make up, why not make believe something that serves you as opposed to something that hurts you? Why not make believe that There's an amazing person right around the corner 
It's just waiting to meet you. If that's what you're wanting. Why not make believe that this is the time of your life to do a lot of really cool stuff? And when somebody comes along that's also doing cool stuff, you guys can get together. For years, people have asked me the question of, like, why aren't you married? I think what they're really asking is, what's wrong with you? Like, why haven't you gotten married? I had a friend actually the other day ask me, ask me about a particular girl that, you know, is, is stunning, attractive, you know, has, has so much going for her. And they ask me, like, what's, what's wrong with that individual? And I, and I almost laughed and I was like, Nothing. Like, what, why does something have to be wrong with people in order for them not to be married? They just haven't found the person that they want to spend their time with. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, the more you focus on the question of what's wrong with me, the more you're going to find out. There is a principle that is repeated so many times in the scriptures and probably lots of other places that says, ask and ye shall receive. And if you ask the question, what's wrong with me? You're going to find a lot, a lot of answers. But what if you could simply acknowledge there's nothing wrong with you? You're just on a different track. And what if you could actually know that? What if you could truly, truly believe that? I'm sitting here thinking of trying of how to convey this as deeply as I can. Now I just sat here and paused the podcast for a moment and really thought about how I could best convey that. And the answer that came to me is just to share with you one of the moments that really shifted everything for me. I was speaking with a coach that I often mention. His name's Michael Neal. He's world renowned and he cost a ton of money to work with. But I I was very fortunate and had a couple of sessions with him that were essentially gifted to me. And in our last session that we talked. I said something kind of off the cuff and I said, Michael, I want, you know, to make this much money. I want to do blah, blah, blah. But at the end, I just said, I want to be okay. I just want to feel okay in my own skin. And then that somehow led to another little bit of a conversation that, you know, I shared with him how I coach people and charge a decent amount of money to do it. And then I'd go in the other room and play Xbox. I don't even know why I told them this. Like, I, I don't know what I was doing when I told them this. And just to clarify, I don't play like tons and tons, but it was interesting because he reached over to the side of his computer and he pulled out a game and he said, Joseph, like, what's the big deal? I'm going to be playing this later. At the time, this guy was like 50 years old. And that part didn't even, that part didn't even occur with, occur to me. The part that did occur to me is here's this world renowned, world class coach that charges tons of money that plays video games. And in that moment for me, I knew and I realized that I was okay. That I was okay exactly as I was. I I think we spend so much time in our lives making people wrong. Oh no, that's not going to work out. I've I've shared this story before, but um, a couple of roommates, I told them because, you know, a lot of their choices, they 
they would play video games a ton, especially one of them. And I basically told them, hey, unless you get your act together, you're not going to get married. Now, this was like 10 years ago. Well, fast forward, and they're both married, and I think they both have kids. And it would, and, and here I am single. So apparently I was totally wrong. But here I was trying to make these guys feel wrong about the life they were living. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that's like my duty and obligation. And it's not. I've learned that since, or I'm trying to learn that. Sometimes we just need to let people have their path. And sometimes you need to let yourself have your own path. Can you imagine how freeing it would be if you almost, almost looked at your life like the Wizard of Oz, that you're just Dorothy on this really long road along the way, you're going to pick up some friends, you're going to pick up some enemies, and eventually you're going to get what you want. Eventually one of those stops on the yellow brick road is probably going to be the person that you want to be with. What if your life was actually working out according to plan and you just didn't know it? I mean, looking back in your life, can't you see that? Like, can't you see the times that you thought your life was going like nowhere and all of a sudden the most amazing things come out of it? Well, isn't that how it works in the movies? Like actually to create a good movie, like what you you know, like even at the hardest point, the point when it seems that all is lost, that the character has no chance whatsoever of getting what he wants. And he somehow gets it. What if that's our life? I mean, where do they get, where do they get these movie scripts from anyways? From life. There's a really cool scripture that I was actually just sitting down and reading before I got on here this today. And, and it says, like, and I was led by the Spirit, not knowing beforehand the things which I should do. I can't think of a better scripture to model part, like our life after. Another one I like is basic, the gist of it is, open your mouth and I'll fill it. Well, when you lead your life that way, you're just on a different journey. Sometimes we look at people and envy their lives. You know, I know a story of a, you know, a guy I went to grade school with, junior high with, and high school with that you know, seemed to have it all, was really happy, good-looking dude, you know, incredible guy. And he was just a good person. He really was. Well, a few years ago, he ended up getting cancer and, and he died. We don't get to pick our journeys. He was an amazing, amazing man that did so much good in the world. But at the end of the day, we don't get to pick our journey. Well, was, was there something wrong with his journey? Did he do anything wrong? No. The truth is, we're all just spiritual beings having a human experience. And sometimes life's going to be hard. You know, he had many, many great, fun years. He worked really hard. And he went pretty far in life, according to, you know, the world. Had a wonderful family, kids, etc. And now he's gone. There was nothing wrong with him. That was just his journey. What if you could live your life... Without all the thinking in your head that you're doing something wrong. 
could you imagine how much different it would be on a date? And not thinking about the entire time, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm old or I'm, I'm, I'm too old for this person. Plenty of times they're probably thinking the exact same thing. Don't worry about that stuff. That's the reason I bring up age is because it's, uh, yeah, for, for a lot of people, like, they have thinking about that. Don't. As long as both people are okay with the age gap, whether that be a few years or whether that be more than that, then that's their choice. Do you really need that much more thinking on top of everything that you're already doing? It's like, oh my goodness, I'm the wrong age. Oh my goodness, I'm the wrong... I'm the wrong whatever. And regardless of whether you are or aren't, let the other person make that choice. If they say, hey, I'm not interested in seeing you anymore, cool, move on. You don't have to worry about that stuff. Yeah, one of the, one of the coolest things that I've done, I guess sometimes when you just have those like rough days or rough few months or whatever, one of the coolest things I've done is I've gone to you know what my church website, which the quickest version is lds.org, and search for the question or search for the topic "Child of God," and just went in and listened to all of these wonderful, wonderful, inspired men talk about like what a miracle you are. And I'm here to tell you today. Regardless of what you have been through in your life, you are a miracle. And there is nothing wrong with you. God made you exactly as you are. And as somebody once said, God don't make no junk. You are, regardless of whether you're religious or spiritual or any of those things, I want you to know that there is, I I believe there's a higher power. I believe we have a loving Heavenly Father and you are His child. And in your darkest of darkest hours, He is always there. There's a phenomenal book that has brought so much peace to me at different times of my life. And it's called You Are Special by Max Lucado. And in this book, he shares the story of these little creatures he calls Wemmicks. And, you know, the creatures, they... <laughs> creatures, that's kind of funny. Oh, these... Yeah, we'll just call them creatures. Why not? And these, these uh, creatures, they basically put on... They give gold stars or gray dots. So you get a great gold star if you can do cool talents, if you can do cool stuff like that. And they give gray dots if, you know, your paint's chipped or they're like these little wooden, wooden puppet type characters. And, and so you get a gray dot if your wood's chipped or if you're, if you're clumsy or things like that. And one day this little Wemmick that, named Punchinello that just is having a rough go at life comes across this girl that doesn't have any gold stars and no gray dots. And I don't want to ruin the story, but he basically asked her, like, why don't they stick to you? Basically, she says, I don't care what people think anymore. The only, and I've shared with you guys my philosophy also. Like, there's only two opinions I care about. It's my, what I think of me and what Heavenly Father thinks of me. And those are the only opinions that you should care about yourself or your higher power or whatever it is for you. And your own. The less you care about what other people think, the happier you often are. And the more you're able just to live your path, 
It's interesting, as I've done this podcast today, I have felt quite a bit of opposition. In the same way I believe in a higher power, I believe in a lower power. And so for whatever reason, like this message was, you know, tried to, the adversary tried to stop this message from coming through, which just for the record, if you ever have nightmares or things like that, I think it's actually a sign that you're actually on the right track and that you're doing good and that you're making that lower, that lower force mad. That's just Joseph talking. But I have, I've had just all of a sudden there's noises and stuff coming from outside and I was just, and, and then phones ringing off the hook in the background and I don't actually turn it off. I just pause it and start that little part over again. But if you have opposition in your life, then you might be on more of the right path than you think you are. Because of the amazing good that you can do in the world. Once we stop asking the question, what's wrong with me? And once we start asking the question, what do I want to create? What am I meant to create in the world? And last night I was on a call with Richard Paul Evans, and he talked to us about what is the big thing that God wants you to do? I <laughs> know as crazy as it sounds, like this... This podcast for me is one of those. There's a few others, but I'm not going to mention them right now, and you guys will probably hear about them later. Because I find a great source of misery for the world is being single. Being single and wanting to be married. And feeling like you have to be married before you can be happy. I'm not talking about those people that just go around and they're totally, totally happy being single and have no desire to get married. That, that's different. But the sooner you realize that there's nothing wrong with you and the only thing that's wrong with you is you're human and humans think you're going to do a lot better. And a lot of the things that you quote unquote think are wrong with you, it's not even your thinking. I mean, you don't, you don't purposely conjure up the thought of, oh, I suck, right? You don't purposely conjure up the thought of, oh my goodness, I am just, I just don't look as good today when you're looking in the mirror. You know, like we don't make this stuff up. I, I really do. I believe that as I call them, these crazy leprechaun thoughts, which is basically any message that comes to your head that is not true and that does not ring true for you. Like similar to when you strike a guitar string or one of those, those tuning forks, there's just this beautiful, beautiful resonance. That's how you know it comes from your inner voice and not your crazy leprechaun thoughts. But when, when we're, we know that we're having this human experience, we're going to have those crazy leprechaun thoughts pop up in our head. And they're going to say, Joseph, what is wrong with you? You're 36 and single. You should be moving on with your life. Or, or Joseph, you're, you're fat. Or Joseph, you're ugly. Or Joseph, you're lazy. Or... Insert whatever thing for you. Now, if you stood next to me and said those things, and I simply said, oh, okay, there's that thought that I'm lazy. There's that thought that I'm fat. There's that thought that I'm insert whatever. And I just keep doing that over and over. And then to say, okay, there's that thought. What was I creating? What was I working on? What was I focused on? After a while, you're going to get bored. And I feel it's the same way with the adversary and all his minions. They like the scriptures talk about, they say there was a third of the entire host of heaven that came down here with us. And whether you believe that or not, I know sometimes you've probably felt it. Like there's just that darkness and just that overwhelming. 
even if you're not religious and you start having those thoughts of what's wrong with me, you can always turn to your higher power. You can always turn to your source. You can always reach out and cry out and say, help me. Those, are, those can be some of the most amazing times. It, it's so funny because we could be having a great, incredible impact on the world. And the world could even be saying, oh, this is awesome. You're doing great work. And yet still in our head, we're like, am I on the right track? What am I doing? Am I saying the right things? I mean, these are actually things that are, that are popping up in my head. When you're too in your head, you're overthinking. Just create. Put your work out in the world. Do what you love. Because there is nothing wrong with you. And if you could be, even begin to fathom the impact that your work could have on this world, you would be awestruck. And you would sit and wonder and be like, me? I could have that impact on the world? Yes, you could. And you may already. I don't know, you might be listening to this and be like, well, I'm already super, super, super successful. And still have some of those thoughts. I'm telling you, the, the crazy leprechauns are not. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know. It's, it, it's, some, it, it's some trite phrase, but the gist of it is, oh, they're, they're no respecter of persons. They don't care. They just want to destroy as many people as they can. And that's what the adversary and his minions wants to do. But you don't have to heed the voice. As, as Michael Neal says, the voice of God does not think you suck. If you're ever wondering where the voices in your head are coming from, if they make you feel peace, if they make you feel joy, if they bring you happiness and feelings of love, they're from your inner voice and they're from your higher power. They make you feel awful, dread, frustration, anger, jealousy, etc. Then they're from that lower power. It seeks your destruction at every moment. So moving towards wrapping this up. There is nothing wrong with you. You are okay exactly the way you are. And your person is going to love you exactly the way you are. One of the shows I enjoy, it's over now, but Big Bang Theory. And you know, you're watching this, you're watching this show the entire time, and you're thinking, my goodness, there is nobody in the entire world that would marry Sheldon. Or that would date Sheldon. It's like this really quirky guy that's just if you haven't seen the show, you could watch a clip on YouTube and you'll understand. But he's this quirky, quirky guy. And, and I'm sure all the characters, if that was a real thing, were thinking in their head, they're like, how in the world is this, this guy ever going to find anyone? And he finds a person fairly similar to him. Now, he could have been thinking the entire series, what's wrong with me? Why aren't I getting married? Why aren't I finding someone? No, those were not his thoughts, if you're familiar with the show. But those sometimes are our thoughts. But you just got to wait a few seasons. It's funny, when you binge watch in any episodes of whatever, you watch 10 years of an actor's life in a few months. We don't have that ability. But you have grown so much as a person. You are working towards goals. You're working towards the things that you want to do in your life. And 
And, and when that time is ready, you'll find your person. But in the meantime, go have fun. Go, go enjoy your life. Stop sitting around expecting things to change. Because the first thing that has to change, well, it doesn't have to, but I can tell you you'll have a lot more fun if you simply just start living the life that you want to live. What, what life would you be living right now if you were married? What things would you be able to do at that point in your life that you're not able to do now? You have more time. You have more energy. You have far less demands right now. And, and now being very honest, I, I understand that what I'm saying is not always how I feel. I, I do not always feel inspired to work on my goals. Actually, plenty of my goals, I have to set a set amount of time that I've got to work on them each day to get them done. So I am not pretending that I work on my goals all the time. Some days I'm on, some days I'm off. But it doesn't matter. The more days you're on, the quicker you'll get to your goal. And the less days you're on, the slower you'll get to your goal. And goals will influence your happiness. But if you're already happy at your core, I think you just start doing the things that you love. And the more you do the things that you love, often the more you're going to enjoy them. So once again, there's nothing wrong with you except you're human and you think. So... And, and that's something that uh, nobody's really found an answer for. So stop trying. And just realize that you're okay exactly as you are. And when it's your time, things will happen. I promise you, they really will. Because that's generally the way the world works. That's generally the way the... That's the way the... That's the way the, the universe works. That's the way the plan works. You just keep showing up every day and eventually stuff happens. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to think of the question, what if I truly believed that I was perfect just the way I am? What if I was truly perfect just the way I am? And sit down and write on that question for a little bit and see what comes up. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Once again, this has been Happy and Single. I've been your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. And if what I've said resonates with you and you're interested in sitting down with me for a one-on-one -on -one over Zoom, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. I've worked with people across the world. Then feel free to direct message me at, on Instagram and we can have a chat. We can talk about set, setting some time up to talk. Thanks again, guys. And remember once again, you are perfect just the way you are. Go live your adventure.